Hello and thanks for tuning in. This is Political Forum for May 29th, 2013. And today our guest will be Alderman John Arena from the 45th Ward. Alderman, thank you for being with us. My pleasure. I'm Steve Nicotopoulos, a staff member here at Can TV Chicago. And over the next 25 minutes, we're going to take as many live calls as we can. So feel free to call in. The number is on the screen below, 312-738-1060. Uh, Alderman, let me just start by um, asking you to tell us a little bit about the 45th Ward. What part of the city are you located in? Uh, we're in the northwest uh, part of the city, about halfway between downtown and O'Hare uh, Airport, um, right where the, uh, the junction is, uh, the Kennedy and the Eden split. Okay. Let me put your info up here. Uh, we'll go back to this throughout the show, but I just want to remind people that your office, obviously, they can give you a call there, 773 two eight six four five four five and of course your your website ward forty five dot org now do you have a um a newsletter or an email list that people can join up on absolutely they can go to the website and uh, we just ask for a name and, a, and an email address uh, we do a weekly uh e-newsletter a uh, couple of uh big stories from the week uh legislative actions we're taking or uh, events going on in this in the ward and uh, then we kind of have a running calendar uh, of things that are going on in the ward, either local uh, park district events, churches, schools, everything. Okay. So you're very involved in the community. Are there uh, any specific uh, community groups or uh, chambers of commerce that you're working with right now? Yeah, both the, the Six Corners Association, um, at, obviously at Six Corners, Milwaukee, uh, Irving Park, and Cicero, uh, is uh, coming up on Father's Day is hosting the Six Corners Barbecue Fest. Uh, they're going to have a, a chili cook-off on Saturday and a, a barbecue cook-off on Sunday, and I'm going to be part of that on Sunday with my son. And um, and then on uh, the weekend of July 26th through 28th, we've got uh, in Jefferson Park, a little farther north on Milwaukee, um, we're partnering up with the Jefferson Park Chamber of Commerce for the Jeff Park Arts and Music Festival, and we've got a lot of great uh, bands playing. Dot, dot, dot is playing Friday. Uh, Saturday is... Uh, uh, Magic Box, and then Michael McDermott on Sunday. So we're really excited about that. Nice. Okay. So uh, in general, do you have uh, a lot of events throughout the summer that you're going to be doing? Or do you have uh, other like specific highlights that you want people to know about in the Portage Park area? Well, the two I mentioned uh, are obviously the, the, the bigger events. Um, I spend a lot of time going to block parties and uh, visiting with residents there. We're somewhere over 200, uh, 230 block parties in the ward. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, the, there's a lot of uh, farmers markets, Jeff Park, Portage Park, and Independence Park all have great, uh, well-established farmers markets, so we uh, invite everybody out to, uh, to those. Great. Now let me talk a little bit about the, uh, the ward remapping, because things got a little confusing. Uh, now here is your I'm old... I'm hoping you can explain it to me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I, I drew a big black line around it to try to make it easier to go. see here. So here is the, uh, the, the ward that ha was uh, active during the last election. Mm -hmm. And this is the new ward remapping uh, based on the census. So I see that you're stretching down south, southeast a little bit more. Can you talk about some of the new, the new boundaries here? Exactly, so uh, we, I had about three quarters of the six corners intersection that I mentioned earlier. I pick up the rest of the other quarter of that uh, and that um, stretches over to Old Irving Park uh, which is just uh, west of the Kennedy Expressway, uh, south of, uh, around Irving Park Road. But then I also jump over the Kennedy Expressway and pick up Independence Park. So uh, the farthest east point I go to now is uh, a Central Park Road and, um, and down to, to Addison. Um, so both of those are great um, historic neighborhoods, lots of single family homes beautiful uh, Victorians uh, in both of those neighborhoods and really strong community groups, really strong neighborhood groups there. So we're really excited about working with them. And that's uh, in the new map here, of course, you have the old Irving mm -hmm. and then Portage Park is right down here. Yeah. Jefferson Park. And, and then Independence Park is all the way to the to the east there. Right, right. All the way down here. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. And um, so now there's a lot of different uh, topics that are being discussed right now in City Council. I know that you guys have been getting a lot of updates on the new parking meter deal or the, the projected uh, changes to the parking meter deal. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what kind of an effect this potentially could have on the city and what, what your thoughts are about whether or not it would be a good or a bad thing right now? 
Well, right now we're, st we're still evaluating the, the administration's numbers and still gathering data on this. It really has two components to it that are kind of tied together. The first part is uh, the administration did a great job of um, uh, forcing uh, Chicago parking meters to the table to work on what's called the true up. It's basically a readjustment, uh, a kind of a balancing of the accounts. Whenever we, you know, put a loading zone in that where there was formerly a parking space, that has a value to it to uh, to CPM. Mm -hmm. And at ever at the end of beginning of every year, uh, end of February, uh, there's what they do. What's called the true up. Now, in the contract, it wasn't very. It was basically CPM held all the data, and CPM came back to the city and said, "This is what you owe us." or this is what we owe you, potentially. In the case, a CPM came to us with a $49 million bill. I think everybody knows the mayor was not very happy with that and said, look, we're gonna fight this. He did a great job of fighting it um, and, and basically brought him to the table and said, look through, uh, we can go to arbitration, but your calculations are just too far, uh, too outlandish. Uh, we want the data, we wanna figure out what this sh really should be. So they put together a web app uh, that we now own and we now can get the data and mm -hmm. crunch our own numbers. And when he came up with that, they basically came down to about uh, a, a, a payment due of about $9 million. Um, that's a big gap. That's about $20 million difference per year between 2010 and, and 2012. And going forward, uh, that's the savings they're claiming, um, the billion dollars in savings. Um, now, whether you look at it as savings or whether you just look at it as, you know, uh, an erroneous bill that is, is you've righted, it, that, that's semantics. Mm. The reality is at least we know now what, wh how we're going to do this true up each year. And I think that's the biggest part of this that, that's important. It's a, bad, a badly written deal and a bad contract. So working with what he had to work with, he did, they did a great job. And Steve Patton... Um, uh, who led the team on this, did a great job of, of really getting to a place where at least we know and we can check our own, um, our own numbers on this. The other side of it is this free Sundays, as they're called, uh, and the extended hours. Mm -hmm. uh, in the neighborhoods like mine, it would go from, you would feed the meter instead of ending at 9, you would feed it till 10 o'clock in kind of the central business district and the, the North River area, you would, uh, you would feed it through to midnight. Now, that's where we're really kind of looking at the numbers and making sure that this is not a windfall to uh, CPM. They're making, they're clearing quite a bit of money with this deal. It's a mm -hmm. good deal for them. We want to make sure that it's the best deal for the taxpayers that we can get. We're not going to be able to come back to the table uh, in the near future on this. We want to get it right now. So our job and the Progressive Caucus, Reform Caucus, uh, and Scott Wagesback and, and the team that we put together has been crunching those numbers. We're trying to pull the information, the data that the that the city, uh, that, that Steve and his team have been using mm -hmm. to come up with their version of the numbers. We want to we want to make sure that we're vetting those numbers very closely. Well, I'm sure I could speak for a lot of our uh, viewers and say thank you for all your hard work on looking at the numbers there. Um, I certainly hope you can get access to all the numbers that you need to figure out if this is the right thing to vote on or not. I think we will. We've got one more hearing on Friday. Um, the vote, there's a potential vote on this in the Finance Committee on Monday and then uh, in front of the full City Council on Wednesday. Okay, so this is coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Let me remind everybody, uh, this is a live call-in show. You can call in here at 312-738-1060. Uh, we have a we have very important <coughs> Blackhawks game on tonight, but it looks like we have a few callers here. That's Hello. good to hear. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hello, Alderman. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for calling. Good, good. I have a question. If the state fails to pass a concealing carry law, will the city still have something in place? Yeah, um, I, I've spoken with uh, 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 President Cullerton uh, about this, and, and actually if the state fails to do something, then it'll actually give the city the right to write its own law. So um, this is a complicated issue, and, and uh, we're watching it very closely. Um, I think some of the bills that have been bantered back and forth, um, I, I would think most of them that I've seen have some provision to allow Chicago to have kind of kind of run the table its own table on this, making sure that people can't come into parks and schools and into public transportation with weapons um, is is definitely something that I'm going to be looking for in those. Okay, we have another caller here. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hi, Alderman. Um I'm just curious. I know the barbecue fest is coming back this year, mm -hmm. and I just wanted to know what are the hours. 
Uh, it, it, it starts at noon uh, on Saturday the 16th and Sunday the 17th. And Saturday it'll end uh, at about 11 o'clock and Sunday they close down at 10 o'clock. Great. How many uh, festivals are you personally training for this year? <laughs> Are you involved? Uh, I, I have two that are happening in the ward, uh, the two that I mentioned. Um, we are going to be raising money for Pressing School. Uh, last two years at uh, Barbecue Fest, we, we brought in a dunk tank. I have a tent there with information about my office, <laughs> and I get in the dunk tank and let people uh, wow. uh, put me in the drink. And But it, all the money uh, goes towards local schools. We've raised money for Taft High School. Uh, for Hitch Elementary, and this year we're going to do Pressing Elementary. If only every Chicago politician <laughs> would go into a dunk tank at some point. Exactly. Yeah, that's very, very, very bold. I use it as that's a popularity great. gauge. So sure. you know, if I if I got a lot more people <laughs> coming in, maybe I'm I'm not doing something right. We'll see. No, that's great. That's great. Um, okay, so we had a question submitted here from a caller. They want to know regarding the closing of the schools. Is there anything that the city can do as a course of action to try to fight the school closings? Well, unfortunately, this was a city action. Uh, the CPS is a sister agency. Chicago Public Schools is a sister agency. The city council doesn't have direct oversight. We can, we, as aldermen, we play an advocacy role for the schools in our wards. Um, I was very vocal about uh, that, that this approach to schools really, uh, I don't agree with it. I think it was too hastily done. Um, on too wide of a scale and without a real picture of, of how capital dollars should be allocated uh, over the long term in CPS. And I think the results uh, of, of years of kind of a revolving door at the helm of CPS, as well as no clear capital pl program of where we're putting money, where populations are shifting, has really resulted in this, you know, in, in an inequitable situation where some schools get resources based on you know a, a principal who's able to advocate very well and and we have some um, low-income neighborhoods that have just been abandoned mm -hmm. and the results of these closings there's there's some neighborhoods that simply don't have neighborhood schools anymore now you can't rebuild a, uh, a neighborhood uh, a community without having that fundamental piece so um, you know, this, I think, really goes towards an agenda of increasing charter schools, privatizing public dollars that way, and they really just don't show a better result uh, at the end of the day for education and uh, educating kids and better uh, performance at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. I was against this. Um, it's really, it really was the mayor's decision. Our school board just abdicates uh, their responsibility to him, and I would like to see a push for an elected representative school board down the road. No, that is a good point. Um, now, uh, some people who may have read the story saw that there was a vote by the school board. Uh, I think it was even last week. Yeah. Can you talk about, yeah, how is it that the school board uh, exists? How, how do they get that position? Uh, they're appointed by the mayor. Um, he's the one man that gets to decide who, that, who makes up that entire board. Uh, it's a board of six people. Um, the CEO is brought in by, by him, and so all of these folks really are accountable to one person in the city. And that's a problem, a school system that uh, you know, has you know, o almost 600 uh, buildings, uh, educates you know, um, over a million children, uh, needs to have accountability down to, uh, just like I do, uh, to the voters and to the taxpayers. And unfortunately, that's not what we have here, and we're the only city in, this, in Illinois that ha does not have an elected school board. All right. Well, thanks for pointing that out. Um, we have another call from the community. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hi, I was reading an article today, and I was talking about how um, people dispute where the real six corners are in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> it's in uh, Wicker Park or Forest Park. I wonder if you want to weigh in on that. Yeah, I saw Alderman Mora Moreno challenged you to try to... Yeah, chess or, I think, rock, paper, scissors. Right, so, uh, right. I'm not sure what we're going to settle on. To set. As, as far as I'm concerned, it's settled. Uh, six Corners has been and, and, uh, and is this the Six Corners in Chicago. It's a historic shopping district that's mm -hmm. uh, uh, been around, you know, for, for almost a century. Um, and if you go to Six Corners at, at Cicero Irving in Milwaukee, you'll see in the sidewalks and medallions that have the logo for the Six Corners shopping district uh, in the sidewalk. So we really kind of branded the area that way and uh, I believe we're the real owners of that moniker. Well and even earlier this year I remember seeing you at the uh, the uh, Creative Chicago Expo in an advocacy role for Six Corners so yeah. 
Yeah, obviously it's you've been uh, you've been a big fan for a while now. <laughs> exactly, I've worked for a long time with that group. Well, let me remind everybody real quick about your contact details. Uh, now, of course, the phone number to your main office is seven seven three two six eight four five four five, and the website is ward forty five dot org. That's two eight six four five four five. Oh, okay, no problem. I'm reading <laughs> off the TV. Two eight six four five four five. Thank you. That, that's why we're, that's why you're here to make sure I'm saying this right. So perfect. Uh, okay, so talking about Six Corners, obviously there's been a lot of news regarding the Portage Theater. Do you have any updates? Um, I know that you you made a big point of talking about it on your Facebook page. Uh, do you have any updates for the audience on um, where that stands right now? Well, unfortunately, an action was taken by a new owner uh, named uh, Eddie Carranza. He's c the current owner of the a longtime owner. I think eight years he's owned the Congress Theater. Now, he's been embattled there with uh, challenges. Uh, you know, the city's uh, revoked his liquor license. Um, has, he has, you know, a 48-page list of building violations against him. And uh, unfortunately, the city's been slow to act on that. He did purchase the Portage Theater on a, in a private sale, which... I really don't have any control over. Um, and we had a, a management team in there uh, th th that had been running the Portage Theater, which is a destination for cinema and, and other live events uh, for the last eight years. And we were happy to continue working with them. They were uh, good operators, never had any problems with their uh, management of the PPA license or public place of amusement license or their liquor license. And we, we originally tried to work with, with Mr. Carranza to continue that uh, kind of uh, management structure going forward. Unfortunately, um, he put pressure on them to sell the entity, the, the corporate entity, to, to him at exactly the time he was losing his liquor license uh, uh, just, da just four miles down the street uh, at the Congress. Mm -hmm. Now, the reality is if, you're, if your liquor license is threatened by action by the city, you can apply for another one, but you're not going to get it. That's just the, the reality. And if your liquor license is revoked by the city, per ordinance, it says that you cannot get another liquor license in the city of Chicago for the rest of your life. It is very strict because there's a high responsibility with the sale of alcohol. And Mr. Kranza has a, a very poor track record in this regard. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, you know, I was gone for the holiday weekend, uh, found out on Saturday that he locked the doors uh, chained them up and uh, the, vent the events that were supposed to go on this weekend and in the coming weeks um, you know are now all threatened. Uh, we've uh, worked very hard my office my arts liaison Sid Smiley has been working very hard with other local theaters to get those performances uh, a new home locally. We've probably got about half of them placed right now we're working on the rest of them so um, we're gonna weather through this uh, and and the, the, the Porters Theater will come back uh, we've been talking to Mr. Kranz's attorneys, um, and, and we'll see where it goes. Mr. Kranz's problems are really come from his, his activities, uh, not the city's, not mine. And what we need to do is make sure that we have a good operator that's really going to produce a positive uh, business environment at Six Corners for the many other things that are going on at Six Corners. We've got restaurants coming in. We've got restaurants that are there. We've got theater groups like the Filmin and the National Veterans Art Museum. Uh, you know, those are things that we're going to going to build on the positives, mm -hmm. and we'll work through the negatives with Mr. Kranza. Well, one of the things I always think of as Six Corners is the Portage uh, the Portage Theater. So sure. thank you for uh, your efforts on that. Well, it, it's a landmark now, and so mm -hmm. one of the good things is we fought uh, very hard over the last year to landmark that building, and now we know it's going to be there for for years to come. We just need to get an operator that's going to be uh, that's going to honor that and re be responsible with it. Great. All right, we have another call from the community. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hello. Hello. Hi, um, Alderman. I had a question about the summer and the um, potential for increased violence. Um, is the city doing anything or working with the police department to try to uh, prevent? gun violence or any other type of community violence from occurring this summer? Yeah, there, there's, uh, this has been a big challenge for this administration. Obviously, the, year, the first year, uh, last year, was, was a bad year in terms of the numbers of uh, gun deaths. Um, the, the mayor's strategy has shifted a little bit. Uh, they've put um, about a million dollars a week into uh, overtime, um, bringing officers back in and increasing their hours and really flooding areas that have been hotspots 
and that has shown some good results. Uh, the long term uh, for this strategy, which um, uh, which uh, the superintendent has used, is really kind of reengaging the community, getting the trust back uh, that the police are there to help the good folks in there and protect them. Um, that's a long term strategy, and it's going to take time. Um, so this initial kind of short term, make sure that there's enough cops that the presence is there uh, in the hot spots, um, has produced good results. Uh, I'm, as the summer heats up, we're going to have to see, you know, if that's going to stay effective. I'm hoping that it is, but we really have to, as we get into our budget season later this this summer, um, we really have to see more uh, police officers kind of build up the force, because paying overtime at this rate is really not sustainable in our budget. There was an article also that came out uh, by, I believe, NBC that talked about how Chicago had applied for a federal grant to try to get more money to pay for the for police overtime or to hire more officers since we're only at about 9,500 officers. Um, do you have any indication as to Chicago might be trying to hire any more police officers? Well, I mean, in the in the 2013 budget, we, we budgeted for 500 officers, but that's really kind of keeping us at, at the water line. We mm -hmm. lose about 500 to retirements mm -hmm. uh, each year. Um, I will say, you know, this mayor is, is, is obviously very familiar with Washington. He's not afraid to go down to Springfield, and, and I think uh, if he can find dollars from some of those sources, he's going to be the guy to do it. So on, on that regard, I think there is a, a, a dedication from the administration, from Rahm Emanuel uh, specifically, to uh, bring as many resources to bear on this problem as he can. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, uh, let me skip to uh, uh, City Council with the Progressive Caucus. Now, um, you know, a few months ago, you were on the brand new Progressive Caucus that, that was uh, announced. And I know it's been something that you had been working on for a long time with the other members. Um, can you talk a little bit about what the what the goal is of of your progressive caucus and what you guys have been have you uh, been working on? Well, I mean, like any caucus, our our uh, our agenda and it's spelled out in our statement of principles, uh, which is on our website uh, and on our Facebook page, um, is really kind of a, a group of like-minded individuals that that want to kind of strive for certain policy goals. Um, and I, when I came into the city council, the, you know, the, the folks like Scott Wagesbach and Rick Munoz, who have been uh, very outspoken voices, very progressive voices, voices for our city, um, are ones that I look to, to emulate and to look forward to working with. So I'm, I'm very honored to have the opportunity to help kind of coalesce uh, a caucus uh, together and into a more formal structure so that we, we kind of have, uh, like I said, these statement of principles and bylaws that, we, that are a way of acting. Um, that I think so far from what we've seen from the response of the public and, and from the press is giving us a strong voice, um, kind of a unified voice, and then being able to reach out to our, uh, our colleagues when we have a policy issue that, that aligns with their uh, ideals and their goals, that we can kind of put together a credible program or, or a set of ordinance to, uh, to move things forward. Um, recently we put forward uh, kind of in, in partnership with, with another caucus, the Paul Douglas Alliance, uh, some reforms uh, to the inv inspector general's uh, roles and his, his powers, mm -hmm. which will um, really allow him to look at the city's uh, structure um, and the city's way of acting from the mayor all the way down. Um, it's very important for him to be able to get the documents he needs to investigate uh, contracting, the way deals are done because that's where the money's going is usually where you find the corruption mm -hmm. and if if there's a dark corner that's where you're going to start finding problems so um we're looking forward to moving that forward through through committee and, and onto a full council vote no thank you yeah thank you for your efforts on this and community building and um all the, all the different things that i know that you're focusing on trying to uh make it for a, a good 2013 in the Definitely. area. And Thanks for letting me be here. Sure. And uh, just as a reminder, uh, 45th Ward, uh, go to ward45.org for more information. And of course, the number is 773-286-4545. With the last couple seconds that we have, do you have any last thoughts that you want to leave with our audience? Just remind you to come out to the 45th Ward, enjoy a barbecue fest on Father's Day weekend. And uh, at the end of July, come out and uh, listen to some music in the park. Uh, for Jeff Park Arts and Music Fest. There's uh, live art, um, experiential art. We're going to have a, uh, a great time out there. Look forward to seeing you. Great. Alderman Arena, thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. 
And uh, thank you also to Sylvia on phones. Uh, I'm thank Steve you. for CAN-TV, and uh, this has been Political Forum. We'll see you next week at 7 o'clock.